Hallelujah. It's been a while. It has been a long while since I've been on here. Bear with me. Bear with me because I just got to share this to a couple groups, guys. Full of joy and excitement for this video right now <laughs> because it's been a really long time. Thanks for bearing with me. We're waiting for the King of Kings to return, for the Lord of Lords to return in Jesus' name. Like a fire shut up in our bones, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached and then, and then, and then the end shall come. Hallelujah. Worship is the remedy to break the yoke of the enemy. And the Lord is coming back soon. And he's coming on the clouds with power and with great glory. And every single eye shall see him, even those who pierced him. The truth of the word bears witness with our spirit that he is the son of God. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the ending. He was, he is, he is to come. And better believe he's coming back soon on the clouds with power and great glory. And all will see him, even those who pierced him. Hallelujah. Let us be found in Christ. In Christ, we are made new. In Christ, we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives, even unto death. In Christ, all things are become new. In Christ, we are elevating this season to new heights, to places we've never been before. In Christ Jesus, he has us in the palm of his hand. Nothing can pluck us out of the Father's hand. No weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper. And when the enemy comes in like a flood in our lives, God's raising up a standard against it. And we're going to continue preaching the gospel to the four corners of the earth. And then, and then, and then the end shall come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is faithful who promised. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And if we seek him early, we will find him. And this season is not a season for distraction. This season is not a season for disconnection from him. This season is not a season to allow the idols of the world to creep into our lives. This is a season of endurance. This is a season of patience. This is a season of God's perfect work actively working in our lives. We don't work from a place of being depleted, but we work from a place of inner peace. We work from a place of inner joy. We work from a place of being filled in the inner man. We are being renewed daily. And it says to be not conformed to the pattern and ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what is the good and perfect and acceptable. We're renewing our minds this season. We're coming out of the mindset of the world's ways. We are remaining in the joy of the Lord. We are keeping the fire lit. It's like a fire that's shut up in our bones and fire, what does it do? It just expands. It expands and it is contagious to everything that's around it. So, you know, the spirit of God is contagious. That's on the inside of you to everything that is around you. The spirit of God that's inside of you is expanding from the inside out and wants to take up residency on this planet, on this earth, so that more souls can be saved, so that more souls can come into the kingdom. Behold, the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And this season, we are not backing down. This season, we are rising up in holy boldness. This season is glorious. This season, there is a an excel accelerated increase. There is an expansion in the realm of the spirit and everything is happening rapidly. It's a rapid succession. And if we just humble ourselves and remain under the shadow of the Almighty, keeping a strong personal intimacy, a strong personal relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And he is faithful to complete 
the good work that he started in you. He is faithful to complete the good work that he started in me. He is faithful who promised. Even when we are faithless, he still remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. And he says, behold, I am coming soon and my reward is with me. So now is a time to just prepare in our hearts. Now is a time for a preparation and an alignment, a shifting of our hearts to be in alignment with the Lord. And for us to pray, Lord, align my heartbeat with your heartbeat. Put on my heart what's on your heart. What is the mission that you have for me on this earth? Because time is short. Time is short. You know, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. It's hard to comprehend when we get to the other side how everything works out in divine timing. But while we're here right now, He has a mission for you. He has a mission for me. And that mission is to spread the good news. It's to spread the gospel and to make disciples to the uttermost parts of the earth. And only then shall the end come because the the grace of God appears to all of mankind and it offers salvation, healing, deliverance, freedom, power to those who believe. But how will they believe? How will they hear unless a preacher be sent. How will they hear? How will they hear unless a preacher be sent? So God is looking for laborers. He's looking for people that will say, yes, Lord. I've come to call the perfect. I've come to call the sinners to repentance, he says. And he's not looking for those that are perfect. He's looking for those that are available. Availability is the key availability and the condition of our heart towards the Lord and us saying, yes, Jesus, I am available. Use me for your glory. And I'm surrendering all. I'm surrendering all that I have. I'm surrendering all that I am over to you, Lord, so that you can use me. Open up doors that no man can shut. Shut doors that no man can open. In this season, a door is opening unto us. Doors that we would not be able to open on our own. Only he opens doors that no man can shut. And only he shuts doors that no man can open. And all time is in his hands. And he knows the beginning from the ending. He's not the author of confusion. And a lot of people are being swayed left and right and are being plagued with anxiety, plagued with panic attacks, plagued with insomnia, plagued with nausea, you know, nausea and nervous system conditions and headaches and all of these things. Men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear of the anticipation of the things that are coming on the earth. And right now is a very serious and somber time of sobriety so that we can keep our eyes focused and fixed and gazed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the lover of our souls, the only saving one that brings redemption. We have redemption through the blood of the lamb because of the blood that he shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And he is the savior of all mankind. And according to Acts 4.12, there is no other name given among mankind, whereby we must be saved. So we just need to give our hearts over to him. We just need to surrender all that we are, all that we have over to him. And he will, you know, finish the work he started in us. And so he just wants our heart. He'll clean all the rest of us off. He just wants our heart right now. He wants us to turn to him this season and say, Lord, I can't, but you can. And say, Lord, your word says that when I'm weak, you're strong in me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And when we pray, we pray for God to to receive our prayer in the high heavenly courts. Angels are worshiping over you right now. And if we ever question his love for us, we really need to go to John 3, 16 and really just continue continue to feed on that word. Like, yes, he does love us so much that he paid such a high price for you, such a high price for me and for our calling and for our existence here on the earth and the mission that he's given for us. It is of great value. 
and we really have to take it serious what he's called us to do and take it serious our vow to him that we made when we came to Christ and not depart from our first love because he's our first love. We must seek the the kingdom of God first in all that we do. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything that we have need of, everything that we're worrying about, about not having, it's just going to simply be added to us as a benefit. It's part of his promises. And we don't have to be swayed left and right and up and down and not know which way to go because when we have Christ, we don't serve a dead God, but he's the God of the living. In Christ we live, in Christ we move, in Christ we have our being and he is directing the course of our lives and moving us in the direction that he has for our lives and he is speaking to us prophetically in this hour. The testimony of Jesus is the the spirit of prophecy, is within the word of God. If we know Jesus, he knows the future, he knows the past, he knows all of our worries and all of our concerns and he says cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you he says don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to take care of itself but just keep everything in the day one day at a time this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and we will be glad in it and nothing is going to harm us nothing is going to make us insecure, but we are secure in the calling that we received from the Holy One of Israel, Lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Most High God, only wise God, He is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? And we just need a spiritual resolution. We just need a spiritual empowerment to continue reviving us on the inside because there's a lot of testings, there's a lot of trials, there's a lot of battle wounds, of course. But we have to put on the full armor of God so that we will be able to stand in the evil day having done all to stand. It doesn't say having done some things to be able to stand. It doesn't say having having done many things to be able to stand, but having done all, all that we can to be able to stand. Because some of the trials that come up, some of the afflictions, some of the persecutions, some of the trials that hit in life will require us to do all to be able to stand. And that means we need to utilize the word in its fullness. Ephesians 6.12 So yes, we need the helmet of salvation. We need a heavenly mindset. We need to meditate upon the things that are eternal. And that's part of our mental clarity. That's part of our mental protection is our helmet of salvation. Just replay this, guys. Helmet of salvation, it's having a heavenly mindset. We are constantly meditating throughout the day on the things which are eternal, on the things that last forever and ever on the spiritual things and that gives us a peace of mind as we meditate on the spiritual things of the Lord that will remove anxiety that will remove fear that will remove depression because we're thinking of spiritual things we're meditating on the things of God we're listening to worship music we're worshiping we're reading the word He says, I'll give you peace and my peace, the peace that he gives us is not even in comparison to the false peace that the world tries to offer us. So the helmet of salvation is a weapon to protect us and the breastplate of righteousness is another part of our armor. The breastplate of righteousness is knowing that we are in right standing because of what Jesus did at the cross at Calvary and because of what he did for us to be forgiven of our sins, we have access to God through the one mediator, Jesus Christ. And we have the ability to enter into the throne room and to to come boldly before the throne of God and to enter in boldly because of knowing who we are in Christ. That we are the righteousness of God 
because we are in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, we've been given all of these promises. In Christ Jesus, we've been given all of these benefits, all of these promises that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Outside of Christ Jesus, there is no blessing. Outside of Christ Jesus, there is no benefit. Outside of Christ Jesus, there is no promise. So the breastplate of righteousness has to do with us knowing where we stand in our relationship with God. And he's a relational God. He wants us to know that we're in right standing with him because of the relationship we have with him first and foremost. But we have that relationship with him because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross that lifted and torn the veil. And that gave us direct access. And you know, in the Old Testament, only the priests could go into the holiest of holies. And only the priest could go in and make atonement for the sins of the people. But because of Jesus Christ, he's our mediator now. We need to utilize this access that we've been given and not stomp it out and really ignore it or even cast our pearls before swine. We need to really not take it lightly, but look at the high value of this calling that we've been given and really utilize the full armor and the tools that he's given us in his word because his word is a lamp and it's a light to our feet. We know where we're going when we have his word. We don't know where we're going and we begin to stumble and really just get in a place that could be detrimental and harmful to us. Without his word, we get lost. Without his word, we were, we are lost. But now that we have his word, his other words, his word works for us actively operating at all times. It's the only truth that exists. So the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. So we have the shield of faith because there's going to be fiery darts that the enemy is going to throw at us and we need the shield of faith. So faith shields us from these attacks. We need to put up the shield of faith when things don't look so good, when we don't know what the outcome is going to be in the moment. We need to put up the shield of faith and begin to declare and speak out of our mouths and proclaim and declare the promises of God and shift our situation to come into alignment with God's living and active word because God's word is sharp. God's word is active. God's word is living. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It's dividing bone from marrow and soul from spirit. It discerns and knows the thoughts and the intentions of our hearts. And we need to put up the shield of faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So without having the word of God, we will not be able to use the shield of faith when the fiery trials and arrows and darts sent by the enemy, by the trials of life begin to hit one after another, after another, we need to be able to stand in this evil day because many are falling away from the faith. Many people are crumbling on the inside of their soul because they just don't have the endurance to be able to stand when those trials hit. But we can rejoice in trials knowing that it works, tribulation works patience in us. It's actually a blessing because our character is being molded. We are being molded and shaped into the image and character of Christ more and more each day. And that should be our our daily prayer really. So we have the helmet of salvation, we have breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, we have the belt of truth. So that's another weapon because there's a lot of deception right now going on. There's a lot of false doctrine, there's a lot of false teachings, there's a lot of false Christs. And we can't afford to pay attention to doctrines of demons, to teaching that was was delivered by devils and demons. So we need to really stay in the word of truth. And it's the truth that we know that sets us free because we shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So having the belt of truth, it holds everything together. The belt holds everything together in the center. So we need to be centered upon the truth that we find in God's word. That's the only way we're going to be able to stand. And if we are just lacking a little bit of of truth, you know, a little leaven leavens up the whole lump. We can't lack truth in this time period. There's a lot of different voices chattering and whispering and speaking and shouting over us. And we need to be careful what we're listening to. We need to be careful what we're looking at. We need to really be careful what
It's because it's an opening. It's an opening and the enemy is trying anything to capture our attention and take our minds off of the things of God. So how will we know what the truth is? Well, God's word says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead us and guide us into all truth. So we need to pray, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit of truth so that I will not be deceived so that you can lead me and guide me into all truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, belt of truth, gospel of peace on our feet. Wherever we go, we bring the peace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, and the word even says that if you go to a household and they don't receive the message of the gospel, then dust off your feet and let your your peace return to you. So never give your peace away because by giving our peace away, we're giving the enemy a, a foothold into our lives to um, to try to take authority over us. But we need to take authority over all of these tactics and plots and schemes and snares of the enemy by maintaining our peace of mind. And peace affects many different areas of our mind, soul, body, and our spirit. If we don't have peace, we don't have rest. And we can't serve. We have to work from a place of internal rest. We have to minister from a place of being at rest on the inside. As we're being made whole because of the blood of Jesus Christ and because of the Holy Spirit transforming us, he gives us peace. And it's a peace that the world cannot give us. We may take medications or we may go to the beach and enjoy nature. And there's other ways, right? There's other ways that we seek after to find peace externally. And yes, it is peaceful to sit outside and enjoy nature. Or yes, that medication works for the time being, but we really need to get to the root of that issue of why is fear springing up to begin with. And God wants to get to the deep places this season. He wants to do a deep work in us. He wants to do a deep deliverance in us because his word says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And we can speak it, we can preach it all we want, but until we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, that's when we really become free. It's by the word of our own testimony, by the, the word of God is living itself out and playing itself out actively operating in our daily life. And it becomes such a part of you that it's a part of your story is freedom. Your story is deliverance. Your testimony is because of what Jesus has done. You have been set free. And so our testimony is still being written and it's playing itself out daily as we make choices to follow the Lord by saying, okay, Jesus, maybe tomorrow. And he's knocking on the doors of our hearts today. And he's asking something from us today because he has a plan for your life. He has a mission for your life. He has a purpose for your life. And part of that purpose entails a full surrender because where we're going, we're not able to take those vices and those idols, those things that we're relying on to fill a deep, a deep void that's in us. We're not able to take those vices with us. Therefore, God wants to put his love on the inside of us deep down and uproot fear and uproot depression and uproot mood swings and uproot every demonically rooted thing that's on the inside of us that's causing sickness that's causing worry that's causing a lack of peace God wants to uproot that that's not of God that's not of God he wants to uproot those things and replace them with his love. And then when his love fills those holes that were there, we, be we become made whole completely, mind, soul, body, and spirit. And then we're able to really minister to other people and help other people from a place of our own personal liberty, from a place of our own personal freedom. So peace is a very important part of having on our armor so that we can continue strong so that we you know we, not all who run the race shall receive a crown but we want to receive the crown we want to be told well done thou good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things i will make you ruler 
over many things come in and enter the joy of the Lord. And it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength this season. Even when all of literal hell is breaking loose, it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And this has been such a season of so many trials. I mean, so many things have happened one after another. And sometimes when we're in the middle of our trial, we don't understand what's going on. We don't understand. And we want to ask the question of why, why is this happening to me? You know, why is this happening in this moment in time? Or why couldn't things just be smoother? But look at the disciples and the early days, Book of Acts, apostles, and all of the hardships, all of the, the famine, all of the persecution. It says that, um, I think it was Paul that said, I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be full. I know what it's like to be shipwrecked. I know what it's like to have an abundance. And we, we've seen both sides you know, and the grass is not always greener on the other side. Every single human being has trials of their own, afflictions of their own to walk through. And the word just break every chain. So you know what I'm saying? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, it is the Lord that delivers us out of them all. It doesn't say out of some of those afflictions, the Lord will deliver you, but out of all and many people are departing from the faith right now because they're paying attention to deceiving spirits. They're paying attention to doctrines written by devils and demons. And this is a really somber and serious time right now. And another part of our armor is the sword of the spirit. And we need to, we need to speak the word of God. We need to testify. We need to share our testimony. We need to proclaim the delivering power of the Lord to help set the captives free. There's people that are lined up five years from now that need to hear your story because your story is going to be an encouragement to the healing and saving and delivering power and power of freedom that Jesus paid a price for you to receive. And by the divine exchange of what happened at the cross at Calvary, we can, we can really exchange our pain and our sorrow for joy. Although weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning. So there's power in the name of Jesus to break every single chain and he is, he is healing us. He is delivering us from all of our afflictions one by one. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There is an army rising up. And we are the army of the Lord. We are soldiers of the Lord. We are soldiers of the King of Kings. We are soldiers of the Lord of Lords. It does not matter what the trials are that we're facing. It says that the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, delivers him out of some of them, out of many of them. No, out of them all. And we need to put all of our faith we need to put all of our trust, we need to put all of our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not like putting all of our eggs in one basket because his word will not return void. It's the only secure and solidified thing that we can possibly trust in. And many people are going to and fro. Many people are wavering right now because faith must be proven as genuine only when it's tested. We are being refined as by fire. And what happens to gold? What happens to silver to make it so shiny, so glorious? It has to go through a process of being put through the fire, but when it comes out the other side, it's glorious. When it comes out of the other side, it's shining. When it comes out of the other side, it's refined of all impurities. God's working out all of these impurities that are in our lives. When the water gets hot, the bubbles begin to form and they, they expose themselves. And the fire is getting turned up right now and the bubbles are forming and they're rising to the surface. These are the impurities that are on the inside of our soul that need to come up and out and be uprooted and delivered of forever so that we can really walk according to what Jesus taught. 
He says, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, on scorpions, over all of the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means is going to harm you. But these promises are for people that are in the faith. And so many people are getting wavered. So many people are getting discouraged. So many people are wanting to give up because of their trial and their cursing, their crisis, which God is even using for his glory as a testimony because his word says that he works all things together for the good, for those that love him, for those that live according to his purpose. It's all going to be used for his glory. It's all working together for the good. And we may not see it right now in this present moment. We not may not see how is this being used for the glory of God? How is it? That's okay. We don't live by feelings. We don't live by emotions. We live by faith. So that's okay if we don't feel it. We just have to trust and believe the word delivered and stand on that even when we don't see it. Because a lot of times we are not going to see it because that's why this is a faith journey. If we saw every single step of the way and had everything mapped out and planned out perfectly and everything worked out exactly as planned, why would we even need faith? I mean, if we just, you know, have faith the size of a mustard seed, it's enough for the Lord to work with. But faith is a gift. So if we're lacking in faith, if any man lacks, let him ask of God and God gives the increase. He is faithful and wants to and desires to give good gifts and good things to his children. Amen, Pastor Bishop Philip Artis. Grateful to have you. Grateful to have you all. I mean... This is the hour of the Lord's power. This is the hour of power. This is the hour where we get to rise up and a holy boldness is coming over God's people because of the restriction of the force of the enemy because of the limitations that the enemy tried to put on the church of the living God. A holy boldness, a fire is rising up in us and we are not backing down. We are standing up. And when I was in my house, I heard him say, stand up. So he let me know in advance, some things are coming. The first thing I thought was, that means some things are coming in the future that would cause me to want to sit down and to not stand up anymore. But he says, no, stand up for my name. Stand up with the full armor, having done all to stand. Don't let these trials overtake you. Don't let these afflictions overtake you. And the only way we can do it is supernaturally. We're wrestling not against flesh and blood right now. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places, against rulers, against powers. We are wrestling against spiritual forces that are in the heavenly dimensions. So that's why we need the full armor and principalities that are trying to take over regions, locations around us. So we need to bind our faith together as one body made up of many members. Yes. Maybe there are, there are separate tribes all within that one corporate body, right? But there's one body made up of many members and we are becoming unified this season so that we could fitly work and jointly together one on and one together so that we can really serve as the corporate body of Christ and we can really run to the fullness of the ability of our calling of what he's called us to nothing more than that and nothing less than that we're graced to be right in the middle right exactly where we need to be in the middle of the track we're just running our race we're running our race and we're standing up we're not sitting back down we refuse to cave in to the pressures and temptations of this world we refuse to give our mindsets over to the media to the news. The news is a false gospel. It's a false gospel. That's really what it is. It's not good news and it's not truth. Therefore, it's a false gospel. The prince of the power of the air is trying to creep into your mind through the media and through the TV. So we need to really keep our minds renewed on Psalm 91 
and he's kept us this whole time. He's preserved us. He's chosen us. He's redeemed us for such a time as this. This is the greatest time to shine for Jesus Christ and to spread the gospel and to let your light shine and don't hide your candle under a bed, but let your light shine and don't hide what you've been given you know, in your house, but shout that word that the Lord spoke on the rooftops. Tell all, tell all people about the Lord Jesus to you. It says to shout it on the, the rooftops. So that's what I'm doing here, you know, and I had a, a dream that I was at a hospital at the front desk window. And when I went to the hospital in the dream, there was, you know, a glass up and there were a couple people working there and what stood out to me was this woman's hair color in the dream it was a reddish blonde color and i said in the dream i really like your hair color i'm gonna get into why i'm sharing all this in a little bit if you'd bear with me so i said i like your hair color it's a nice reddish blonde color it's really nice so i started talking to the receptionist in this dream right and i'm just conversating with her and what I picked up in my spirit in the dream was that she was not a believer. But what stood out to me and seemed odd to me was when I looked at the room that she was talking to me from, there were Bibles everywhere. I mean, every crevice of that room, every surface of that room was covered with the Word of God. There were scriptures laid out everywhere. And I said, that's so odd because there's Bibles everywhere, but she doesn't seem like a believer. The way that we're talking together um, is, is giving me a vibe that she's not a believer. So the next morning in real life, I woke up, had an issue, had an issue that needed to be addressed. So I ended up going to the hospital. I ended up going to the hospital and when I was at the hospital, I was reminded because the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance certain things that we need to know when we need to know them. And I, you know, the Holy Spirit had brought to my remembrance this dream about being at a hospital, talking to the woman at the front desk, her hair color, the scriptures everywhere, her not being a believer, that standing out to me and being odd. So I was in excruciating pain, was making a scene in the emergency room because of the level of pain that I was going through. I mean, made a full out scene through, you know, it was, ba it was bad, threw up, you know, was just groaning in pain, making a complete scene in this emergency room. <laughs> like it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So when I got called, into the office to give my insurance information, I went in there and I noticed that the woman at the front desk had a reddish blonde color hair. And I was reminded of the dream from the night before. And I told her that the Lord is my healer, that the Lord is my healer. And the moment I told her the Lord is my healer and I trust in him for my healing, all of the pain and all of the symptoms immediately lifted off of me. And she literally witnessed a healing take place right before her very eyes. So God sent me in there to be a witness to testify to this woman. So don't curse your crisis all the time. It's all going to be used for his glory. It's all going to be used for his glory. So I shared with her um, the verse out of Isaiah 53 that says he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed and i told her that it's an amazing scripture to share with patients who come in who are suffering following after and she agreed and she was into what i was saying she seemed pretty receptive i don't think she was a believer but she seemed pretty receptive so I believe that I was used to plant a seed that day. All the symptoms left. And it had to do with a testing of faith. Testing of faith. And God's going to give you certain revelations in this season that you're going to need to share with other people because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. And our faith is going to be tested by these various trials of many kinds but it's producing such a perseverance in us and he has a mission through it all.
to see souls come into the kingdom, to see souls get healed, souls get set free, souls get delivered, an expansion of the kingdom of God on earth as in heaven. So if we're cursed, you know, it's not a good thing. We just have to trust and believe that he'll bring us through to the other side, that he's not going to leave us now. He didn't bring us this far to leave us now. So that was just one of the things that had happened. And there was just, there were various trials in the past couple of weeks. But through it all, God says that he is our healer and we have to trust in him. And sometimes we can be, oh guys, I have to plug this phone in. Bear with me here. Oh, geez, let me fix this. Take this off here. There we go. Okay. He says he is our healer. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek. So this season, a lot of trust. I have to trust that he knows what's happening. Oh, here we go, guys. Of course. I don't know how to... Why this is doing this. All right. All right, whatever. The phone's plugged in. We're good. That's all we really need. So we're just... Yes, it's now. Bear with me, bear with me, because I don't know what's going on. Off track from what I was talking about. So, anyway, there's going to be trials, there's going to be testing, there's going to be things that come up in life, and the intention and goal of it all is going to be to try and test our faith, because faith must be tested to be proved as genuine. It just must be so. That's just how it is. It must be, we must be tested. We must be tried at some moment in time. We're going through the refining fire. So we have to trust what the Lord is showing us. And the Lord gave me that dream in advance to give me the comfort in knowing that this is all meant to take place right here and right now and that I'm with you. He says, I'm with you even until the end. So we just have to have confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that what he's provided for us because of the divine exchange that took place on the cross at Calvary, your vision is coming to pass. Continue petitioning him in the courts of heaven for the things that he's placed on your heart and the desires of your heart. He will give you as long as it's in his will and in alignment with his will for our lives. We want his perfect will. There's a good will. There's an acceptable will, but we want the perfect will of the Lord operating actively in our lives daily. So we just need to continue seeking him. And when we go out, you know, it's not like the gifts of God can be shut off and on like a light switch. You know, we can be in church and God could reveal something to us about somebody personally without them ever telling us, right? And then we could leave church, want to just live like a normal person and go out to eat and not conversate with anybody. But it doesn't work that way. Once a gift is activated, you know, the real purpose of the gifts are to empower the saints of God and to see the lost souls get saved. So you can be out somewhere and maybe God gave you a word of knowledge. Maybe God dropped in your spirit a revelation about somebody that they didn't tell you and it was something about their personal life and you feel led that you need to go up to them and share what you've been given I encourage you to step out in faith and test if that word that you received about that person is accurate. We were out to eat at Applebee's the other night and I was going to the bathroom. I was walking by a woman that was sitting there and she was eating. And when I was in the bathroom after I had passed by this woman, God began to download some things to me about her personally, about her history and how she, he said she knows me, but she turned away from me. She used to read my word and she's been going um, astray and I don't want her to be lukewarm. I want her to be on fire and return to me. And he began telling me a lot of different things about trauma and abuse that she had endured as a child. And he showed me that her family used to force her to go to church and she didn't have that personal bond and relationship with the Lord. And he's calling her to begin seeking him so that she can have that. And I said, oh, wow, Lord. Okay, like we just came here to get something to eat. 
and go home. So we thought. So you can't shut these gifts off. That's what I'm trying to say. And to much is given, much is also required. So be careful what you pray for because we have to be responsible now. Um, if God's given us a gift, we have to be responsible with that gift and obey what the Lord's saying to do. So I had to go up to her. She didn't know me from a hole in the wall. And I had to deliver the word that was given to me. And I wanted to test if the word was accurate as well in doing so. So I delivered the, the word to her and tested it and I came to find out that it was accurate and I asked her if we could pray and we prayed and hopefully I'm believing for a turnaround that she's going to return to the Lord from that so you know how many people wouldn't be saved because we were too shy or too self-aware and self-absorbed to step out on a word that God's given us. So we can't be so caught up in what are people going to think and what's going to happen and what are people going to say or are they going to reject what I'm giving because we just have to focus on the Lord because um, that's really pride talking when we're so self-absorbed of how they're going to respond. So if they reject... Um, Christ, they're rejecting Christ. They can never reject you because you are in Christ. They can only reject Christ in you. And that only um, has to do with their personal relationship with him. It has nothing to do with you personally. So we really need to remove self. We really need to die to self and just begin to step out in faith on some things that we're receiving. And then for the waitress we had, God gave a word as well. It was really interesting. So I wanted to I wanted to test to see if that word was accurate as well. And, you know, it had to do with past relationships and all of the abuse this woman went through. And he told me she had a back problem, had me pray for her back. And it's good to just test things out, uh, you know, because we live by faith, not by feelings. And I'm sharing this not to draw any attention to myself. I'm sharing this to encourage people to step out in faith and the devil will try to make us second guess what we heard. You know, he tries to to take the seed that was planted and, and choke out that seed from being able to grow. But we know when we hear from the Lord. And so we just need to step out more in faith on a daily basis and, and test that word given. And the more we do that, we're training our spiritual muscles to become stronger. Just like when you go to the gym and you pick up weights, your muscles hurt for a little bit and they get stronger and you go back and you're able to do more repetitions than you were before once your muscles heal and you continue this process of being sore, but then, then healing up again and being sore and healing up again and being sore and healing up again. And then your muscles are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's called muscle memory. So for our spiritual reflexes, it's just the same. You have to test it out and step out in faith over and over and over and over again. And our spiritual muscle memory increases. So God is doing a lot of things. He's doing a deep work this season in us and he wants us to just step out more than we ever have before and to trust in his name and to trust what he's telling us that it shall come to pass and there were so many trials that happened this month and i can't even begin to really go through all of it but really god just says to stand firm you know i was supposed to go to pennsylvania for an event that i had signed up for and they had put advertisements out and everything. It was a big deal. This was a big deal. I had planned all month for it and my fiance ended up getting um, very sick and he was hospitalized and everything. It, it wasn't looking good at all. Like it seemed like he really may, may not make it. I didn't I, in the natural, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but spiritually I was trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word that what he had spoken will come to pass for us in our lives. And so I was battling and wrestling with, you know, wanting to be faithful to show up for this event that was nine hours away. And I would be away out of New York for nine hours for three days in a row. And I said to myself, wow, that's really far away and it's not even close to the hospital. I wouldn't be able to be here for him if he needed me. And I was wrestling. I was wrestling internally about getting to this event because it was a commitment that I had committed to. But I didn't feel a piece of release to go. So this all has to do with just hearing the voice of the Lord and, and really 
flexing and strengthening our spiritual muscles this season. So I really didn't hear his voice. I didn't hear, and it wasn't given up a piece to leave this state. And I had a friend that was willing to come with me and everything. She was willing to come with me and bring food for the trip. And all of that, everything was right there. They had a hotel if I wanted to come out for this event that I could have stayed at. But because there was no peace to leave, I had to call them and, and thank them for the opportunity and tell them that I'm not gonna be able to make it due to the situation that was happening. So when I told my friend that was gonna come with me for the trip, she said, you know what? I had a vision that your car was on the side of the road and never made it out of New York never made it out of New Jersey. You never even got close to Pennsylvania. And I had this impression in my spirit several times, but I didn't want to tell you to cause any anxiety to come upon you. And I said, wow, that is such a confirmation of the Lord's voice in this situation. You know, God will confirm his will and he will be faithful and true to his word. So we just have to hear and have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So we have to really flex and strengthen our spiritual muscles to listen while listening. Some people just listen, but we need to listen while we're listening. There's a difference. Of There's a difference from listening. Okay, we can hear a little bit what God's saying. Maybe it sounds a little, you know, fuzzy. But when we listen, while we're already listening, that means tuning out all of life's distractions. That means fading out all of these things that are trying to pull our attention and get us so focused on everything but the Lord's voice. When we shut all of that down, I know it's hard to do because a lot of different things are trying to pull at our attention and pull us in different directions and cause us to pay attention to those voices, but if we quiet out the noise, even for a couple days in a row, there's a layering that takes place. When we really get a couple days alone with the Lord and get away, sometimes we need to actually physically and literally get away, like take off for a couple de days or even a week, if God's grace makes it possible and permits. You know, if we don't have that ability, we can pray for that ability. We can pray for that ability for God to provide and really get away and just tune in and listen in and make sure that we get filled and we really can't afford to pour out from a place of depletion, but we need to pour out from a place of rest. We need to pour out from a place of being filled up. We need to deliver words um, of knowledge, word words given by the Holy Spirit from a place where we've already first received our own revelation. God's already ministered to us on a personal level for what we need. And then he can use us so that we can minister to other people around us for what he wants to do in their lives as well. But some people get so fixed and focused on a workspace mentality and just running around like Martha did in the scripture and running and running and running when Jesus says that Mary had the better part and Mary chose to sit at Jesus's feet and just receive and we need to just receive this season and the fruit will be displayed following after the good works will be displayed following after it's a byproduct of personal intimacy but it doesn't work the other way around it doesn't work where good works come first and personal intimacy comes second that's completely backwards and you know the religious system sometimes um how do i say this sometimes there's a religious system you know where we get in a rut of just doing certain things over and over again in a ritualistic manner. But pure religion undefiled before the Father is this. It's to comfort the widows and the orphans that are in need in their time of affliction. So God is just leveling everything out. He's unifying his body. He's bringing us together so we can really be more equipped to spread the gospel. So we can really be more empowered to empower each other 
so we could really be more genuine um, because our faith is being tested of its genuineness and we could just be more transparent and just share the hope of the gospel and to always have a reason for the hope that is within us and the reason for the hope that is within us is because Christ's light is shining upon us and he came to set the captives free to heal and to deliver and he is rewarding us for diligently seeking him and he is taking us to new heights. He's taking us to higher levels. So he's going to require us to go to higher levels for him. So he will grace us to have those, yes, sabbaticals. He will grace us to have time alone with him and just shut down the media, shut off the TV, shut off the radio, get away from certain noises, certain frequencies, certain voices. Because when you're listening to the radio and you're traveling in your car, when you drive through certain territories and certain regions, that station begins to fade out because the signal is not connected as clearly as it needs to be connected for that station to come in and sound clearly through the speaker. And that's just a prime example of our personal intimacy with Christ and hearing his voice. Sometimes we need to be... Um, locationally aligned so that we can be in a strong place to receive his word and we can hear with the ear of the spirit what thus saith the lord and sometimes he has a message that is for a corporate body of believers and he wants to deliver that message to somebody that's faithful and he may just tell you to get away for a little bit because he wants you to receive something in that time period and maybe it, it would be a little bit different if we didn't get away and he has downloaded so many songs to me and Eric when we went away to Pennsylvania. I'm not saying it has to be a different location because God is everywhere, right? But wherever he's leading, we have to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit that's within us, that's guiding us and obey what the Spirit is saying. And when we do that, we'll always come out on top. We win because he already won the battle for us. We are overcomers, so we just have to be more in sync and more in tune with the leading of the Holy Spirit more than we ever were before, because there are a lot of distractions. There is a lot of noise. There's a lot of gospels, but there's one true gospel according to the word. There's a lot of preachers. There's a lot of teachers. There's a lot of false Christs and false messiahs, so... You know, we really can't get so caught up on sermons more than we're in our word. Although sermons are good and spiritually feeds us, but they're not a replacement. Uh, they're not a meal replacement. You know, we can eat our food, right? But some people take a lot of vitamin supplements because they're not eating enough or they're not getting enough nutrients that they need to sustain their body on a daily basis. So they take a supplement instead. Well, God's word is our nourishment and man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Some people are supplementing their nutrition, which is supposed to come straight from the word of God. And they're supplementing it by taking sermons in every day and never reading the word personally for themselves. And that's a prime example of what I just explained. It's just like somebody who needs nutrients and they're not eating as much as they need to. So they just rather take a supplement, but the supplement is never really as good as the real thing. We need the, the real source of our nutrition from the word so that we can get spiritually nutritioned to sustain us with strength spiritually this season. So it's good. It's good to read the word and to pray for knowledge and revelation and understanding in the word. God is faithful and he's doing a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. And he is making rivers in the desert. And he can make honey come out of a rock. He's making a way where there seems to be no way. He's making a pathway when we're in the wilderness He's showing us what to do, where to go. So he is speaking and some people say, well, I haven't gotten an answer from God yet, or I don't know what to do. I haven't heard from him. 
Well, feeling a peace, I didn't feel like I heard from him either when I was praying about making a decision to go to Pennsylvania or stay in New York. But in that moment, I didn't feel the blessing of peace when I thought about leaving the state. And that let me know I'm not meant to leave right now. I wasn't graced. I wasn't given peace when I thought about that decision. But when I thought about the other decision of staying in New York, I felt a peace. So sometimes that's his voice right there in that way. It may not be a divine word, like a literal word, do this or do that, but it's just getting more in tune with following the way of peace and not going in the way that that brings disturbance. And we can even pray. I've prayed this before. Lord, let my spirit be disturbed when I'm trying to go away. That's not your will. When I'm going in a way that's not your will for my life, let my spirit be disturbed. When I'm going in a way that is your will for my life, let my spirit feel peace and magnify those feelings so that I know that I know that I know it's the way you want me to go. And he is faithful. So see, it just takes faith to pray that and to ask him. And it takes faith to respond with peace in the direction of peace. And to not go in that way that we feel disturbed about. And to act on that is actively working the gift of faith that we have received. So I hope this blessed somebody. I do have a song I wanted to share. Hold on. Bear with me because, guys, I'm sorry. No, it's not completely with me because I want to play a song. And kind of sit back just so you could hear it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Worship is the Ramadi. Hallelujah, Lord. To break the yoke of the enemy. We praise you, Lord. Have faith the word is telling me. And Satan's got no hold on me. Can't believe what you see on TV. Men in white carrying bodies. Trusting in the almighty dollar bill, money cannot heal the ill. We cut the cords of the restrainer, we repent for our behavior. Only Jesus is Lord and Savior. Better trust Him, cause your riches can't save you. i 
with you now We trust in your name Lord, we trust in your name alone Hallelujah, hallelujah Praise God who gives Glory to the King of Kings. Nothing shall move us. Nothing shall harm us. Nothing shall shake us. Nothing shall shift us off course or out of place. But the Lord is faithful who promised. So we just have to remain encouraged. We have to remain with our eyes fixed and gazed and focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ because he paid a price for us. And if anybody doesn't know Christ, just say... I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that you died. You were crucified. You were buried. You rose again on the third day. Jesus, I make you my Lord. Jesus, I make you my savior. Come into my heart. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire and power right here and right now. Save me. Save my friends. Save my family. Use me for your glory. Use my story to bring you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Heal me. Deliver me. Set me free. Give me tongues of fire. Anoint my hands to cast out demons. Anoint my voice with the authority to cast out demons. Let me lay hands on the sick and see them be made whole in Jesus name. Amen and amen. He will do it. He will withhold no good thing. He's not withholding anything that's that's good. He's not withholding from you. He's not withholding anything from you. It's just that we have not because we ask not. Let me switch this here. Well, we ask amiss. We're, we're asking for something that's out of alignment with his will. So we have not because we ask not or we're asking amiss. That's what it is. And we look at people and say, how come their life is like that? And, and we, we are plagued with comparison. We're plagued with comparison, especially on social media and the United States of America and the ways of this nation. We've been plagued with comparison. Comparison is a killer. We just have to focus on our own personal mission and stick to that mission and just do whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing within our lane and stay in our lane and keep our eyes focused and fixed on Jesus. And we will win the prize. We have eternal life in Christ. So that's the greatest prize there ever was, ever will be. So just stay encouraged and he's coming back soon on the clouds with power and great glory in Jesus name. I love you all so much. Uh, please keep me in prayer and I will pray for all of you and be blessed and be encouraged in Jesus name. Love you.